Now we look at the last part of this uh, feast, the last scripture reading for the feast. Uh, it's the Gospel of Luke uh, 24, 46 to 53, which is just about the last um, words in the Gospel. Uh, they are the last words. I thought they forgot that part about but they didn't. It's here, in praising God in the temple. So, we're going to begin, therefore, uh, well, we'll take a look at the uh, the little bit of what the text says before the part we have. Huh? Starting in verse 44, which is some voice, verses before us, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. This is the third time that the enumeration of the three parts of the Tanakh have been mentioned in Luke, huh? twice back earlier in the chapter. Um, no, I made a mistake there, I'm sorry. This is the second time. Thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead and on, on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. And then starts the... Um, the, the uh, we have that part, and then uh, he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. And as he blessed them, he parted from them, and was taken up to heaven. They did a homage, and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. Very beautiful. So now we're going to look at that a little bit more closely. Um, first, Starting with the verse of 46, um, he said to them, It is written that the Messiah would suffer and then uh, rise from the dead on the third day, and that forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. So once again, he's talking about the, the law the prophets, and the writings. He's saying the whole of what we call the Old Testament, the whole of the former scriptures, bear witness to everything that has happened in my life. And now uh, salvation will be preached in my name because I am going up to heaven to prepare a place for you. And that's what he says. Huh? Uh, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. It's remarkable, isn't it? How many times I've done it preaching on the streets, even in a conversation, the reality and the majesty of Jesus, who died for us, who rose, and who went to heaven, just enunciated, spoken about, preached, if you will, has the effect of changing hearts because he is in heaven making sure by the Holy Spirit that these words make an impact, that they do something. Uh, so uh, he says then, you see, this is what I'm talking about, you are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father to you. Upon you, really. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany, which is uh, up the hill, and blessed them. And as he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy and we're continually in the temple praising God. So this is the actual attempt. These are the last verses of chapter 24 of Luke. Um, and they're telling us about this uh, change in his humanity. Uh, now, it's not that he never comes back. He comes back any time he wants. Um, and speaks to people. Sometimes very small, tiny things. Sometimes uh, 
changing lives, making saints. Certainly one example in our own day is uh, St. Faustina Kowalska, with whom he spoke a lot and instructed her. She kept it all in a diary. If you haven't read it, it's a very beautiful thing to read. Our Lord, the heavenly Christ, instructing her and fortifying her in her suffering, which she did for the world. And the message, as you know, is mercy. It was through her that the Lord got word to John Paul II, I want a feast day. I want it on the Sunday after Easter, and it should be called Mercy Sunday. How anxious he is that we get the notion of his mercy. And so that's what he's um, uh, talking about. But here, uh, you see, they're in the temple praising God. Now, St. Thomas uh, treats of all of these issues in the Summa, in the third part, question 57, article 6, of uh, other articles, of course, but the, the last one in this series is article 6, and he asks, the, the editor phrases the question, whether Christ's ascension is the cause of our salvation. And the answer he's going to give is yes. It is expedient to you that I go, from John 16, 7. That is, I should leave you and ascend to heaven. That's expedient for you. And therefore, it is entering into the causality of our salvation. Uh, now, uh, then he begins to answer that. And I want to go over this because it's very important. On our part, insofar as by the ascension our souls are uplifted to him, because as was stated above, uh, his ascension fosters first faith, secondly hope, and thirdly love. Fourthly, our reverence for him is thereby increased, so we no longer deem him an earthly man, but the God of heaven. Thus the Apostle says in 2 Cor 5.16, we have known, if we have known Christ according to the flesh, that is, as a mortal, whereby we reputed him as a mere man, as the, as the gloss indicates, uh, now we know him so long, no longer. Paul, this person who died, and these troublemakers are trying to claim that he's alive, we've got to stomp this out, it will disrupt and overturn the whole of our uh, Jewish system. So, uh, he goes out to stamp this out. But on his way, the living Christ meets him. And it is the living Christ, risen from the dead. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, in his people, in his church, in his body. And so, um, uh, the text that Aquinas quotes to say, yes, the, uh, the, the, the ascension is the cause of our salvation, is, uh, it is expedient for you that I go. Uh, all right. Now, uh, you see, if we have known Christ according to the flesh, that is, as a mortal, whereby we reputed him as a mere man, but now we know him so no longer. Blessed are we if we really know who he is. We really relate to him as who he is, and we know him as the risen, eternal, divine Lord, still humanized, still with his humanity. Okay. Um, now, yeah, from his part, in regard to those things which in ascending he did for our salvation, uh, it, was, it was good that he caused it. First, he prepared the way for our ascent into heaven, according to his own saying, I go to prepare a place for you, and the words of Micah, he shall go up that shall open the way before them. There's a good text that he skipped um, that is um, in the gospel itself here. Uh, Behold, I am going to prepare, that's from John, a place for you. But in the, the uh, gospel himself, he speaks about this uh, going out. Uh, so then, um, because as the high priest under the Old Testament entered the holy place to stand before God for the people, so Christ entered heaven to make intercession for us, as it says in Hebrews 7.25. And Jesus, Jesus' priesthood, is this, in, this intercession for us. 
He's always pleading for us. Because the very showing of himself in the human nature, which he took with him to heaven, is a pleading for us. So that, for the very reason that God so exalted human nature in Christ, uh, he may take pity on them for whom the Son of God took human nature. And then, thirdly, being established in his heavenly seat as God and Lord, he might send down gifts upon men, according to Ephesians 4.10. He ascended above all the heavens, that he might fill all things, that is, his, his uh, gifts, as it says in the gloss. So, the ascension of Christ is causative of our salvation, because in this transformed humanity, um, we have that, as you may remember, that was the uh, uh, part in the letter to the Ephesians that the liturgy takes for this. Huh? Uh, I'm trying to find it for you now quickly. Um, hmm. Um, well, in the letter to the Ephesians, he speaks of this. Somehow I can't find it easily right now. Um, but um, I did mention before this lovely quote from uh, Cardinal Van Waugh, that he prepares the way for us and uh, comes to take us with himself. Um, sometimes dying people know that Jesus is there to take them now to the Father. Uh, and uh, if you're ministering to somebody at that point, the things they say, the things, all of a sudden they stop talking to us and they're talking to Jesus and then they die. Uh, oh Lord, I'm so glad you're here. I love you. And all these things, huh? Uh, which is so beautiful. So, this ascension is the root of all liturgical power, the transformed humanity of Christ, and the power of that humanity transmitted to us through the sacraments, which are the works of his body. Remember, we are joined to that risen and ascended body. And so the liturgy mediates this life to us. And therefore, uh, we rejoice in the mystery of this ascension. And if we ponder it enough, we will start to see the beauty and the power of the way that the humanity of Christ uh, radiates through the sacraments, uh, saving, transforming power. Amen. <laughs>